You know, if you were a cannibal, you'd never have to worry about going hungry. Is that a finger? No. Aphids are a group of insects probably best known as pests that suck sap out of plants, especially those that humans care about for agricultural and ornamental reasons. But there are a few things that make aphids truly unique among insects. For one thing, they're basically Russian nesting dolls, as one scientist explained to me while we were discussing his recent paper, linked in the description. Though some aphid species can reproduce sexually, like most other animals, all aphids have the ability to reproduce through a process called parthenogenesis, where a female aphid basically clones herself, giving birth to live daughters who are genetically identical to their mother. This alone is amazing, because parthenogenesis has only been described in a few groups of animals. But what's even more amazing is that juvenile aphids sometimes cannibalize adult aphids. This usually happens if the plant they're feeding on doesn't have the right levels of nutrients. If a juvenile aphid cannibalizes its mother, who is genetically identical to all of her babies, it is almost as if she were eating herself. This might sound strange, but it's actually an idea that can be supported by the concept of kin selection. Kin selection means that an individual is more likely to act in a sharing or giving way, what scientists call altruism, toward other individuals to whom it is related. Related. The more closely two individuals are related, the stronger the kin selection. This makes sense, because even if my altruism means that I am unable to pass on my genes for some reason, hopefully the brother, sister, cousin, or parent I'm helping will be able to pass on their genes. Since I share some of my genes in common with that relative, that means they'll be passing on some of my genes too. Kin selection explains a lot of different altruistic behaviors in animals. In honeybees, hundreds of female workers will protect and feed a hive, giving up their ability to reproduce to allow their mother, the queen, to continue producing offspring. In Florida scrub jay families, juveniles will often stay to help their parents raise the next batch of chicks, rather than going off to build nests and families of their own. And human parents will risk their own lives to protect their children from wild animal attacks, or rescue them from burning buildings, or other dangerous situations all because of kin selection. In the case of aphids, where the offspring are genetically identical to the adults, the kin selection could be even stronger than in the previous examples, where only some of the genetic material was shared rather than all. If a mother aphid becomes food for her baby when normal food supplies run low, she won't be able to reproduce anymore. But since the cannibalism will allow her clone to survive, it will be able to pass on all of her genes through continued parthenogenesis Genesis. In order to determine if juvenile aphids show a preference for cannibalizing related or unrelated adult aphids, the researchers dusted the aphids with blue or pink fluorescent powder so that observers would be able to tell the difference between groups. They noticed that only adult aphids are victims of cannibalization, probably because they're big enough to be a satisfying meal. However, whether or not aphids prefer to cannibalize their clones is a little more confusing. While there is some evidence that juvenile aphids might actually prefer to drink from adults that are not related to them in terms of the number of times they were cannibalized, juveniles drinking from adults that were related to them drank for longer periods of time. There were also a few cases of adult aphids eating other adults, but no cases of adult aphids cannibalizing juveniles. This is a great example of a time when scientists asked an interesting question, but they're only just beginning to discover the answers. Can you think of any other potential kin selections scenarios in nature? Would you help your brother or sister raise their children if it meant you could never have your own kids? Would you let your child eat you if it guaranteed that child would survive long enough to have children of its own? How would you design further studies to explore cannibalism in aphids? Leave your ideas down in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for new scientific research papers with interesting stories. If you read or write something that you think would make a good video, send it my way. I also I also plan on doing a video at some point in the future on how to read scientific journal articles, since sometimes they can be rather dense.
events. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, please remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and read science posts on my blog. I'll also be a periodic contributor on the radio show Blue Dot, so you should go check that out as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.